What's going on with it, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chasing Greatness. Today, I promise to deliver a phenomenal episode for you to sit back and enjoy. Today, we're going to talk about everyday life situations and, of course, fitness topics for those out there who wants to get in shape and be in the best shape of their life. Thank you for tuning in. Sit back and enjoy, and let's get this started. Why? Did I decide to do a podcast and what made me go down this journey of actually making a podcast for everybody who, you know, just basically wants to listen? You know, here's the thing. You know, a lot of us, we get a chance to breather or um, and actually take a step back. Right. And to, to reset and think to ourselves when we're either on our way to work or vice versa, you know, coming back from work. And that's when we actually have a, a lot of us have a time to really sit down and really think and adjust to to everyday life situations. Speaking of everyday life situations, this is one of the things I want to talk to you about today and basically what the title and what it's going to be about. Because let's face it, people want to know what this podcast is going to be about. Well, today and just in general, I want to bring to you just, you know, everyday life situations. But at the same time, I want to focus and help everybody on their fitness journey. You know, I am an elite personal trainer here in the Chicagoland area and I also do virtual training um, all around the world um, as well. So I have a lot of knowledge. Uh, when it comes to fitness, and I want to help everybody along the way, you know, a, a lot of it, you know, is is really straightforward. A lot of it is not, and you're gonna see where I want to talk to you all basically about, you know, how to live a healthy life, right? And just at the end of the day, you know, have fun with your fitness. You know, I, I'm sure a lot of you, you you know and heard a lot about you know, personal training and personal trainers, their, their motto is, you know, <laughs> the more the better. But at the end of the day, you, I'm sure a lot of you heard, you know, their, that phrase when they say, well, they can't take it no more. You know, the clients come, but then they leave. They don't stay. Well, I'm going to be very honest with everybody. That's not really a client's fault. You know, it really isn't. Now, I'm not saying everybody is the personal, everything is the personal trainer's fault. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that it's the way that you structure your training that you can keep, you know, a lot of your clientele. You know, a lot of my clientele, I mean, my return base is very, very low. Um, I'm sorry, very, very high. It's very, very high. Um, the retention is very high they stay with me and i really really strongly believe it's how i structured my training you know my clients they look forward to training uh they have a good time and at the end of the day it's it, it's called personal you know personal training for a reason because listen let's face it each and every day a lot of us we we deal with a lot of things personally and, and it's kind of hard to actually sit back and and actually deal with the situations at hand and also have these goals to try to achieve everybody faces that each and every day so i'm saying all of that to come full circle here you know a lot of that has to do with the leadership the personal trainer you know it really does if you make the the training very very exciting number one the client will want to return with you that's just the bottom line. I mean, again, it's fit in their lifestyle. You know, just like, you know, training yourself for the personal trainers out there who's training themselves, just like you know, you know, you look forward to going to the gym. You do. You look forward in training. You look forward in actually achieving your goals. And that's the main reason why 
you keep going the way you do because at the end of the day you look forward to it right but if it's a drag and you you find yourself you know oh i gotta do it again and man do i have to do this well that's not sustainable and you and i both know that all boils down to your clientele as well if they look forward to training you're going to keep them not only they're going to just be shredding off them pounds or gaining that lean muscle they're going to do that while having fun you know that's just the bottom line and and all my elite trainers out there who know what i'm talking about you exactly know what i mean you know it's just like going to work every day it's no different than going to work every day if you gotta punch the clock and you know you got that that horrible boss right that is always drilling you. It's always on top of your back. Well, you only stand there because you have to get a paycheck every two weeks or every week, right? But if the paycheck was, if it wasn't because of the paycheck, you already know that's not going to be sustainable. Who wants to go to work each and every day and deal with that type of boss, right? We all know this. Personal training is the same. So, if you got an elite trainer who knows what they're doing, who knows how to structure your, your programs and just have fun at the same time, it's just like going to work with that awesome boss. You know, you look forward to getting up, even though you're getting a paycheck. That's the reward. Going to work, getting that paycheck. That's the reward. It's that paycheck. The results is your reward while working out. So I like to, to, to mirror these images together because it's no different. If you know you got that that boss, you know that that you look forward to, you have fun all the time, you all go out, um, you know, just having fun on a regular basis. You have to do your work, right? But at the same time, you know that boss believes in you. You get it done on a regular basis. Then you look forward to going to work. It's not a drag. That's the type of job that you can be with, be with each and every year with no questions asked, unless another opportunity comes up that allow you to either make more money or you know if something happens you have to move or something like that you know then you can always relocate but other than that you know you you know that you're going to be there you know you're happy you're getting the paycheck you know you're going to be there that's exactly the same way with personal training no doubt about it that's exactly the same way you know you know you're going to get the results, you see the results, you feel good, you look good. And at the same time, you know when you go there, that personal trainer is going to have different workouts almost all the time. You know, you're going to have phenomenal results. He's funny. You know, time flies. That's the thing. When time flies, you already know that you're having a good time. And that's the thing with personal trainers. So all my elite trainers out there. You know, if you're having a hard time or my regular personal trainers out there who's have, who just starting out and you, you know, you have to, you know, struggle, you're struggling to actually get, you know, clients. That's the, my only advice to you is not only just, you know, you got to hustle, you got to want it. You know, nothing's going to come to you just by knocking on your doorstep. That's a fact. You know, you have to want it. Then when you want it and you get it, you get hungry, now you have to hunt. You have to do what you have to do to let the clients know or your potential clients know, look, this is what I bring to the table. You know, this is what I bring to the table. Take it or leave it. This is actually, I mean, be honest with, you know, your clientele. Be honest. Because people can spot a, a salesman a mile away. They can spot it a mile away. You know, you know what I'm talking about. You know, when you, you go into those car dealerships, you take two steps in the parking lot and then like four guys is walking out looking at you. They all looking at you. Right. What are you doing? You need some help. And they walking over to you with the clipboards. The first thing you do is get your defense mechanism on. Right. You get defensive. Right. Oh, I don't want. I don't need for nobody to come to me, you know, I got it, I got it. And, and some of you may need help here and there, but the minute they start talking numbers and, hey, you want to come sign a contract and all this other stuff, you get turned off. So my personal trainers out there, it's the exact same thing. Be honest with your clients. Let them know through the gate 
exactly what you what they expect. You know, don't just tell them what you what you want them to hear. You know, be honest with them. Be honest with them because it's going to go a long way. People, this, look, this is 2020. People can see, literally, you know, a fakester or somebody who's who's just lying through their teeth. You know, don't guarantee nothing that you not know that you can't you can't achieve. You know, be honest with them. I tell my clients through the gate. All right, the results before you even ask. You know how long it's going to take to see results. I'd say them three about three to four months minimum. And why I say that is because I know my craft. I've done it. I've been in this for years. I've trained a, a ton of clients. And that's my protocol. The programs that I, I pretty much write out for all my clientele in person and virtually. This is the results that you're going to get around this month frame. You know, stay away from all the ones, the commercials you see, right? Lose weight in seven days. Lose weight in 30 days. <laughs> don't don't come in there saying that because this goes back to my question, you know, you know, my issue that I had through the gate. Don't be a salesman. Don't guarantee nothing that you know that A, they can spot a mile away that you're, that you're faking it. Or B, like I said, be honest with your clients. Be honest because I am a firm believer if you're honest you know, and you are good at what you at what you do, the work is going to speak for itself. And some of you may say, well, what, what do you mean by the work is going to speak for itself? Let me give you an example. I, lo I love giving examples because examples, you, you can't fake that. This is what it is, right? So here, let's, let, let's just jump right into it. So, you know, when you see Ferraris, everybody know about a Ferrari. Let's take it to a back to the cars again, right? People think I'm a carsman, a car salesman in a minute. <laughs> I'm not. I promise you I'm not. But I don't know. It's funny. I don't know why I'm keep talking about, about car salesman. But listen, let me, let's, let's go and go down that road. So let's just say about, let's speak about a vehicle, right? A Ferrari. I mean, you know about those, right? Everybody knows about a Corvette. Everybody knows those fast, hot rod vehicles. Well, let me ask you. Do you see any commercials for Ferraris, Rolls Royce? Bentleys, do you see any commercial for them? You don't, right? Think about it this way. Do you ever see while sitting down watching a little TV? I barely have time to watch any TV, but if you do, you know, any ads on social media, any anything like that, are they promoting anything, any of the cars? Do you see a Ferrari, a Bentley, a Rose? Do you see anything of that gratitude being promoted? Throughout your social media or commercial. I think we all know the answer to that, right? You don't. Why is that? Because it speaks for itself. If you want a Ferrari, you know what you're going to get, hands down. Yes, you got to come correct. You got to have the money to buy it. But let me ask you. You know what you're getting when you step in a Ferrari, correct? You know what you're getting into when you get in a Bentley, correct? They don't need to advertise. They don't need to advertise because all they're going to do is waste their money. Because you, you're promoting about a, a, a Bentley or, or a Ferrari or a Rose. You're promoting that. They already know it's out there. But the person necessarily may not have the funds to get it. But people still know what it's about. So your clientele, speak, and reverting this back to personal training, if your product speaks for itself, people are going to see the results. People, you know, word of mouth is everything. And that's what I really basically want to title this uh, podcast today about. It's how to get clients, how to, how to keep a client, and how to successfully run a personal trainer business. You know, listen, a lot of you may not know exactly anything about me, but my, but my name is Antonio Norman. I actually, like I said before, I'm a personal trainer in the Chicagoland area. I run my own business. Uh, I never worked in a corporate gym. I never worked at LA Fitness. I never worked at Charter Fitness. I never worked at a, at a chain uh, gym. 
Now brace yourself. Some might be like, "Wow, how you? Then how you? How are you training? How are you getting clients?" Wow, well, man. Listen, there is. I've been sitting back and monitoring the fitness game for a very long time now. Before I before I even turn it into a business. And one of the things that I've seen when it comes to these big corporate gyms, which I've trained at personally, trained myself, I've seen how personal trainers operated there. And I've seen the clients. I've seen the type of clients. I mean, I've I actually seen in depth of how the training goes. And I got to be very honest. I was, listen, I wouldn't even want to sign up for that if I was serious about my, my, my gains, if I was serious about my weight loss, if I was serious about my lean muscle mass building. You know, I would be concerned. I would. And a lot of you out there probably don't get it, but let me, let me help you out a little bit. So, one of the things, and some of you may can contest to this if you actually trained at LA Fitness or a big chain. At the end of the day, unfortunately, I'm not throwing shade at anybody, but this is, you can't throw shade at nobody if it's facts, right? At the end of the day, you, you actually, these big corporate locations, is, 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 it's a numbers to them. It's a numbers game, and I get it. It's a, it's a, biz, it's a big business. It's all about running the numbers. How many people can they come in the door all in, a, in 24 hours, okay? And some of you, in some of these corporate locations there 24 hours so how many clientele how many people can come through the door within 24 to 48 hours that's what they're looking for right now that also trickles down to personal training so a lot of these trainers in there and and listen I'm not, I'm not knocking the actual trainers that's in there because they got to start from somewhere and i get it but the big corporates is the ones that i'm i'm actually kind of um pointing a finger at because this is what they're telling the trainers how to run the business. They tell them, you know, for one through the gate, 30 minutes a session. That's it. 30 minutes. It doesn't matter the client. It doesn't matter the goals. It doesn't matter what they're looking for. 30 minutes each day for each client. That's all they give in their, their trainers at these corporate gyms. And a lot of you maybe sit back from that, but a lot of you probably don't know, but that's exactly the standard. That's the standard in LA Fitness, Charter Fitness, and the rest. It's 30 minutes. That's it. For me, my, my clients, that's half of the warm-up before you even get into the workout, literally. Now, I'm not again, I'm not trying to throw shade on nobody, but let me give you a little bit of example of, of why that's half the warm-up on me. Now, let me revert you back to me. Now, for one... At the end of the day, the human body operates a certain way, you know, and all my elite trainers out there, they, they, they know what I'm talking about. It operates a certain way, meaning, the, especially depending on your profession, what you do for a living, some muscles need to be stretched properly. It needs to be, you need to, you need to warm up the body, stretched properly before you even want to get into your intense training. That reduces Stress that reduces inflammation, that reduces um, extreme automatic fatigue because you actually warming the body up properly. That reduces mainly injury, that reduces muscle muscle tension, and it it increases blood flow through the body. Now I can go on and on about this, but those are just some highlights that what proper stretching does for the body. Now. If you are able to get in there and work out immediately, going back to LA Fitness and these corporate gyms, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if, if they're only giving their trainers 30 minutes to train each client, again, it's, it's sound, I've seen it where they come through the, the door and it's literally wintertime out there, cold, and they start attacking the weights. I don't see any stretching. I don't see any one-on-one -on -one true personal training meaning asking the client how they feel i mean you know get to know the client you know and that's what the things that i see on a daily basis with all these corporates you know and it's not necessarily personal training it's just training i mean they come through the door and they get right after it again that's just to name a few things of why i decide to take my business independently and, and and to do my own thing and open up my, my my business because before i even turned into a business i said to myself 
that I wanted to make sure I was there for my client. I want to make sure they get the adequate amount of time that's needed for the results they're looking for, for the time they're, they're dedicating with me um, in their life. I want an individual, whether it's a female, male, um, it doesn't matter. I want them to leave me happy and look forward to a next gym session. And I'm going to be very honest with you. This may sound cliche, but at the end of the day, I like for my clients to leave me and knowing that they had a good workout. But most importantly, what makes me happy is this, to know that my client feels good. That's the thing. Some of the trainers, and I can't, I'm not going to name any names or anything like that or throw any shade, but it's just about money. I was, told a long, I was told a long time ago, money, if you're good at what you do, money is going to attract you. That's just the bottom line. If you're good at what you do, the money is automatic waiting for you. If you're good at what you do. And what makes me most importantly, how to make me feel good, what makes me feel good each and every day is like I said, it's Knowing the client feels good, they're getting the results, and just seeing a smile on their face because that's something money cannot buy, right? That's something money cannot buy. You know, I train a client, let's say, three days a week. The first day is Monday, our first session back for the week. They say, how's your weekend? Oh, I feel good. You know, a little tight here, a little tight there. Kind of assess their body as such. And then we go from there, right? And then after that, just ask him, well, we'll work on this. How do you like how do you like working on today? Oh, let's do it, right? Getting their true feedback, being with the client. It's a team effort. It's not about how fast I can get you in and get you out. That's not sustainable. I'll tell some people, this is funny. I tell them, I say, at the end of the day, can you see any transformations on an on a LA fitness page or do you see any transformations on a chart of fitness days or um, web page can you see any of that you're not going to because that's not the ultimate goal for these corporate locations unfortunately and so some of you may ask why did I open up a business that's truly why I went on my own now there's a bit of sweet to that we already know Everybody knows where LA Fitness is. Everybody knows where Charter Fitness is. Everybody knows where these big corporate gyms are located at and what they're about. So getting clientele is nothing for the trainer. But at the same time, they can attract you clients, but the gym takes 60 to 70% of their pay from the personal trainers that works there. So now the trainers is feeling some type of way because they're not really getting compensated like they're supposed to. So they don't really care about the 30-minute sessions or their clients. Do you see the domino effect in all of this, right? It's crazy how you can sit back and think about it. But if your proceeds is coming right to 100% you, and you have to work that much harder to get clientele, in the long run, it's the ultimate way. Because now if you have to work a little harder... To get your clientele but if you hold that clientele and you know and they see the greatness in you to give them the results they've been wanting for years and some of them some people for a long time that actually you know is what matters so like i said you know this is the reason why i went that road of getting my own clientele of actually turning into a business and it's because of you it's, it's for the people out there who struggle who has been struggling to get the results they're looking for i've been there i feel you and it can be very very frustrating of you going to the gym each and every day not seeing the results that you, you you've been you wanting for so long and so much and and, and the thing about that is 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 it's hard 
to find nowadays a good, good, true trainer who's going to be there for you, give you the results you're looking for, and actually making the workout fun. That's the thing. That's the thing. So I want to thank everybody from actually tuning in to my first episode of Chasing Greatness. And that's what it's about, everybody, is chasing greatness. And listen, there's not this phrase, chasing greatness, is not about just workout and fitness. It's about being the best version of yourself. When you wake up each and every day, you have two options. You can lay in bed and dream all day long of the things you want or the results you want. Or you can go to plan B, right? And get up and chase your greatness. My name is Antonio Norman, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to the first ever episode of Chasing Greatness. Stay tuned. I will be uploading each and every week. And I want to tell everybody one thing. And I will try to end my segment episodes each and every time with this. Chase greatness, everyone. And stay blessed up.